Hello, this is Roger Reaper from First, and you are listening to the Thomas Eriksson podcast. Hey everybody, and uh, welcome back to the Thomas Eriksson podcast. My name is Thomas Eriksson. Some of you may don't know that by now, uh, but for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, uh, it's me, uh, Thomas Eriksson, as I just said. Uh, I am the, um, uh, the main musician in uh, the one-man uh, band uh, Mork, which is a Norwegian black metal band. Uh, Mork also has a full lineup with uh, members that travel the world together, spreading uh, the Mork plague out there. And uh, by the looks of it, uh, COVID has uh, been calming down a bit lately. So now we're uh, we're about to, you know, embark on yet new ventures. And it's been a while since we've been uh, been able to travel. We've been playing a lot in Norway, though, the last year during the, the pandemic. But uh, now, um, this month, actually, and the next, uh, November, December, we are going to head out and uh, hit the road again. We're going to play a lot in Norway and uh, a, a few gigs in Sweden and even some in Denmark, which will be great. Uh, the first show I should promote now it has to be the upcoming one, which uh, is uh, Saturday the 13th of uh, November. We will be playing in uh, Stavanger, Norway for the first time uh, at uh, the Helion Rock and Metal Pub. Uh, support act uh, this evening will be Kirkegrill, which uh, is kind of cool because I don't think I ever even seen them live before. Good times, I am sure. Uh, and then, uh, as I told you, there's some uh, gigs in Sweden and Denmark as well. Uh, that's a part of the, the upcoming tour, which uh, starts off at the 26th of uh, November and runs until the 5th of December. Norway, Sweden, Denmark. And that is uh, a tour that we have called Svart Nordisk Union, which is uh, a Mork headliner with this very special guest, the Danish uh, Avsky, which is an up-and-coming black metal uh, band, which I uh, really do enjoy. You should check out them wherever you find your music. Uh, regarding my band, though, Mork... Uh, if you would, would like to support me, uh, the podcast, uh, and the band, please head over to the official web shop, pick up some uh, vinyls, CDs, t-shirts, patches, stuff like that. We recently actually sold a limited run of uh, a special Mork coffee blend uh, with a custom uh, cup, but that one uh, is sold out, so thank you so much to the ones who have picked that up. It's a big support for us. But uh, there's a lot of music and merch over there. So please head over. And uh, for those of you who like to have autographs on the vinyls or CDs, that is an option. You just uh, choose while ordering. Uh, there's all, also a PayPal link in the description here if you want to donate, uh, which also is appreciated. Uh, the podcasting I'm doing here is all for free. I don't make any money of it. Other than some cents here and there on YouTube, I suppose. But I do it because I think I, I think it's fun. You know, uh, it's become kind of a, a second hobby for me now. Um, uh, Murk being my life work, I suppose. The band and the music. But uh, the podcast is something I picked up uh, early... <laughs> Not even early, I suppose the first week of COVID, when the first uh, shows were actually cancelled. Uh, Morken, uh, actually Mortem, uh, the other Norwegian black metal band, which is one of the earliest names, actually. We were uh, going to cooperate and have a co-headlining show over in um, 
I think it was in Bergen, actually. But that was, as I said, this was the first week COVID came to Norway. Everything was shut down. And at that time, I started doing the podcast. And I'm still doing it. And that's a good thing, I suppose. It's been a lot of fun. Not a lot of episodes, though, uh, since we we have only reached uh, number 30 now of the episodes. Um, so I'm not just spewing stuff out there. I do a podcast when I do have the time, basically. And I, uh, most important to me is to have guests on, you know, to keep things interesting, basically. But that brings me to the point today, because this episode is a special one. I have not done this earlier. Um, this weekend, uh, I was invited along on a trip, a road trip, together with uh, Marius Wold, uh, who is uh, currently singing in Mortem. But he's also the first vocalist in Thorns, the legendary Norwegian black metal band. Uh, they kind of invented black metal together with Mayhem, I suppose. Uh, Marius invited me along uh, together with um, Harald Eilertsen, which is actually the very first bassist of Thorns as well. And uh, I guess you can kind of get now the, the hints uh, at where I'm heading with this. We went on a long, long, long road trip to visit the one and only Snorre Ruk. Uh, back in the day, he was called Blackthorn. Uh, really interesting and uh, important figure in the black metal scene and history. We were going to visit that guy. And, uh, you know, when when you are traveling for... I have no idea, maybe 10 hours plus by car. I, I figured I'd just, I should just bring along my laptop, uh, a small sound card and my microphones. So we, we made a podcast episode, the three of us, Marius, uh, Harald and myself. And this is, uh, like I told you, a bit different. Uh, compared to the earlier stuff that I've been giving you here. It's uh, basically random conversation uh, together with these two fine gentlemen. Uh, I just got to know Harald this weekend too. So uh, great guy, very interesting. So I, I suppose I will have him back on here actually to just dive deeper into his story. Very fascinating guy. But... Uh, just to warn you guys, uh, the sound is not as smooth as it uh, would have been in a more calm and silent setting. Keep in mind that we're actually in a running car on the road during this episode. Uh, it is listenable, but uh, I know I have spoiled you with my great, great sound. <laughs> Just joking. And um, the episode actually ends really abruptly which is kind of funny because the thing is that i don't have i don't own any kind of uh, chargers or anything for the laptop that works in a car so we just went for it until the battery died and uh you know it is what it is let's try this this uh road trip podcasts uh i present to you my very first uh, on the road podcast uh, featuring uh, Marius Wold, Harald Eilertsen, and yours truly. Da er jeg i opptak, ja, nå, altså. Er det i opptak? Det er i opptak, ja. Jeg tror kanskje... Jeg skal prøve å bare høre på hvordan det høres ut. Yes, yes, yes. This is uh, Thomas Eriksen, uh, reporting uh, from the back seat of a very, very small Volvo car. And uh, currently I'm somewhere... 
I don't know, between Elverum and Tynset, I think. Something like that. And uh, the driver is... Uh, yeah. Marius Hall. Uh, from Mortem. Of Mortem. And... Um, my name Co-pilot. Is, yeah, the, the sturdy map reader. Uh, I'm Harold Eilertsen. Um, probably better known from having played in Thorns in ancient days. Uh, otherwise from Imbalance and stuff. Yeah. yeah, cool man. I just met you today for the first time. Yeah, likewise. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a pleasure this far. <laughs> How many hours have we been in the car now, guys? Uh, four? No, five, 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 six, five, something like that. Uh, we are closing in on getting to know, know each other, I suppose. So uh, we just decided to do a kind of a road trip, maybe? Ro road trip podcast episode now. Just to fill the time because there's nothing to do, obviously. Um, can you say something about the view, <laughs> Marius? <laughs> Oh, it's not much to see. It's dark and it's foggy. And, uh, Deep dark fog. And it's like in the movies where you suddenly get into the fog, and when you get out of the fog, you have no faintest idea where you are. Oh, funeral fog! <laughs> yeah, yeah Harald, you're, you're quite a movie buff, you told me earlier. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, especially horror movies? Especially horror movies, but uh, I kind of enjoy all kinds of all kinds of films. But um, of course, like uh, like with the music and metal, your heart beats stronger some some places than others. And That's true. Horror films is my place. Now, how did you get into that? I guess it's the same reason I got into into metal. I had uh, interest in occultism and, and the paranormal and kind of stuff like that from a very young age. I used to go to the library to read books about the subject, reading them in the daylight and then getting scared and not getting to sleep in the, in the, in the nights. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, I kind of got disturbed at, at some point. I uh, oh, see so you read horror books. Not horror books, but books about uh, the paranormal, about uh, telekinesis about uh, yeah, ghosts and, and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Like so-called facts? Uh, very much so-called facts. Yes. Uh, pictures of uh, ectoplasm and, and yeah, all the good stuff. I remember those books where there were pictures of uh, ghosts and uh, the Loch Ness Monster uh, and uh, th those books. And then the more grain in the pictures were, the better they were. Yeah, I and uh, I, I totally wanted to believe, you know. <laughs> Just like X Files, I want to believe. Of course. So, uh, but, but were you into like uh, Lovecraft at all? I discovered Lovecraft a bit later. Uh, yeah, uh, big fan, big uh, fan of, of his writing. And, uh, yeah, me too. I, I, I haven't re um, uh, I haven't read everything, but I'm uh, espe I <laughs> especially into uh, Shadow Over Innsmouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the one for me. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. Uh, yeah, the Cthulhu uh, mythos. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Very inspirational. It's a nice, tight family bond. And, uh, and so the shadow you, of Rinsmith. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. There's just it's a scary book, actually. It's a scary it read. It is. Um, yeah, I, I, I like his way of, of trying to kind of portray things that is impossible to describe and his ways of describing the impossible things to describe it's uh, some beautiful prose there I, I suppose he was a bit uh, crazy in the mind you know I don't know <laughs> <laughs> probably has to be but when did he pass away by the way oh that's I don't know that's ages ago then probably in the 50s or something I don't know maybe it for before because uh, I don't know. The, w w when are the books from? Most 20s, of his, right? Most of, most of his writing is from yeah, 1916 to late 20s, I think. That's really early. Yeah. And those books are so important even today. 
They are. They, they are kind of uh, what established the American horror tradition. Um, because before then, you all, you, of course, you had uh, Bow and stuff, but, but that was more into the British tradition or from from the old country. He, he kind of made a special, um, uh, kind of brought brought uh, the horror in, into an American setting. Okay. Yeah. And the cool thing is that it's uh, Massachusetts, right? Uh, yeah. Around the Boston area. Yeah. Which is actually really European. Yeah, it's uh, one of the early settlements. Uh, I have a little wet dream about going over there and trying to find the location of Innsmouth, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure if you find Innsmouth, but uh, yeah, I know. I, I, I spoke to some people at, at work that are from the area. Yeah. And, and uh, they say every year there's like um, um, a, a Lovecraft convention in um, Providence, Rhode Island, where he's, where he's from. Okay. And um, it's supposedly really, really cool. So I would I hope, to hope, to, hope to go there someday. I have read a lot about the location uh, and it's actually in, in his own descriptions of where Innsmouth is located. He's mentioning the little towns that actually are there. Yeah. Like it's like in between Ipswich uh, and, uh, and and uh, Newburyport, I think, yeah. which is the city it's closest to in uh, the visuals. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just want to go over there and feel the air. There has to be an atmosphere there. Yeah, probably does. Electricity in the in the soil. Mm -hmm. So uh, how how are you on uh, on the Lowcraft? Uh, what is? Never read anything. So no relation. No relation. What got me fascinated, f firstly, was actually when I heard um, the Metallica track, obviously. Yeah. The the the, the last track on the Ride the Lightning, the Call of Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. Excellent atmosphere in that track. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and and they were they were kind of the people or. or where we first heard about it too, and yeah, there you started, go. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's all connected. And uh, I think we can thank Mr. Uh, Mustaine for that riff, by the way. Probably. He and wrote. Uh, you know, he even used it uh, later in his uh, own track, uh, Hangar 18. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a magical riff, for sure. Yeah, he he wrote a lot of good riffs for for the early Metallica albums. Yeah, he did actually, and uh, and I think he gets credit for it as well. So uh, yeah, no yeah, foul. That goes without saying. I mean, he should have. Some people are actually debating that uh, Mustaine single-handedly created thrash metal. Yeah, well, so, some people probably some do. Some people. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm blank. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, about the Mustang? No, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> oh. That was a bump in the road. Yep. There's, um, but think, I have things no, are going bump in the night here. You asked me one question. Yeah. About uh, if I had some relation with. Not relation, but something with. Uh, Lovecraft? Lovecraft? Yeah. I never read anything by him. Yeah. But I played uh, the role. Role-playing game. Yeah. Role-playing game, yeah. Uh, Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Yeah. And that we one. Too. That, that allowed to do. So then you know part of the story then, I suppose, or the, or, or the setting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's um, I, th I think I they the managed to, to capture the setting quite well in, in, in the game. Yeah. I liked the, I, I liked the whole... Uh, Scenery in the game, kind of. Yeah. yeah. But I never, I didn't know anything about the story before I, I played it. But is the game set in the New England area and the fisherman stuff and the cult yeah. and stuff like that? Is it the same thing? Yeah, but, but of course this is a role-playing game, so it's a bit up to the game master and what kind of scenario you're playing. Yeah. But. Um, 
at least the, the scenarios I've been playing has been following quite closely to the, the atmosphere and, and um, mythos that uh, Lovecraft created. What is the what is the fictional uh, place again where Cthulhu ro uh, roams or, uh, or uh, his uh, kingdom? Riley or something? Uh, Rilie. 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 By the way, have you heard um, there was uh, there, there's an experimental band from the south of Norway uh, called Famlen Forsök, um, which uh, in the early 90s made um, uh, yeah, or, or late 80s made a, a recording um, called the Cthulhu Show. Okay. Or the Lovecraft Show. It's really, really cool. Uh, I think the musically they are absolutely the people who have come closest to capturing the the atmosphere in uh, at least that I get from Lovecraft. Okay. It's beautiful. They, they made it both in English and and in Norwegian, um, but the Norwegian version is absolutely the best one. And what was that you said? Uh, Famlen the forsök. Yeah. Uh, stumbling attempts or yep. what you want to call it. Uh, it, it's an experimental band from from Christian oh, it's, Son. it's music. Yeah, it's uh -huh. from, from Christian Son. Yeah, and they, yeah, it, it's very like experimental poetry mixed with uh, music and uh, interesting, very interesting. And their their Lovecraft uh, Cthulhu show is is just brilliant. I need to check that out. Yeah. I have a recording if you want to. It's not it. metal. That's not metal. What is it? Is it like synthesizers or? It's a, more like soundscapes with poetry. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Did you ever? I, I don't know if you're a big uh, gamer when it comes to video games. No, I'm not. No, I am um, on the first Xbox. I um, I got hold of a, a game called The Call of Cthulhu. Okay. Uh, dark corners of the earth or something mm. which is based on Shadow of Innsmouth mm. and the game is fucking beautiful and it's grim and it's uh, that's uh, basically where I got most of my visuals from when I or and the feelings I get from that book and uh, there's something about the atmosphere there and uh, the buildings and the creepy fishermen but the, the my point here is that the soundtrack mm -hmm. to that game it's just wonderful. Cool. I will show you that when we land at our destination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I can f find out the, the Lovecraft show too. I, I even have some some video recording from that uh, that concert. That did. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. It's pretty cool. We love lo Lovecraft. <laughs> sure do. Are we going to talk about where we're heading today, or...? Uh, you say something, you're much better in English. Okay. Can you say? Yeah, alright. Yeah, we're heading up to uh, an old friend of ours, uh, called uh, Snorre. Um, better known as uh, the mind and the confusion behind uh, thorns. Snorre Ruk. Snorre Ruk. Um, yeah, so I haven't seen him in a couple of years, so it's uh, be good to meet him again. And he lives uh, kind of far away, kind of secluded. Uh, it depends on where you start, of course. He will say that we live far away. Well, so that's true, but he lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, he lives in, in the coastal area of Norway, yeah. where there's wind and rain pretty much all year long. I'm excited to see the place, and I don't think I ever been through that town actually. Uh, the area is really beautiful. It's uh, really nice, with mountains and everything, fjords, you know. Lots, lots of fjords. But you actually played with him too, right? Yeah, we played together in yeah in the early days of Thorns. Um, in his in his room, where we made uh, we made the songs and. and Recorded uh, what now is known as the Grimerk uh, tape uh, demo, which we originally only recorded to 
give to Marius and to Bard for uh, for so that they could uh, hear, hear the songs and be a bit prepared before we met everybody met in Trollheim for, for rehearsals. Oh really? Okay, yeah. so it wasn't a proper demo, it was it, just... It was never meant to be released to the public. But it's kind of legendary today. Yeah. Um, Thanks to Bord. Yeah, that's Bord's doing. Uh, he was having a fans in at the time, yeah. and had lots of contacts, and he started sending it around. At first, we were quite annoyed at that because we didn't feel the songs were finished, and it wasn't the way they were going to be presented, and, and it was very crude. And, and yeah, we did. We didn't really know what we were doing when we were recording it, so. Um, but what, what, th- thing, things happen the way they are, and I guess today nobody would have heard of Thorns if if it wasn't for this. But what what was the inspiration for that uh, those tracks? The inspiration came from a lot of different places. Um, of course, we wanted to play dark music, and we wanted to play metal in some form or another, and. We were inspired by, by, of course, the yeah, the general inspiration that, that, that was in, in the underground metal scene, or at least the extreme metal scene at that time, when, with yeah, the kind of play, play Satanism and, and occultism and, and and horror and and yeah, role playing games and that stuff. But we we did use some music. I know that uh, Slutter was uh, a little uh, inspired by um, uh, Depeche Mode. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and Alphaville. Alphaville. We stole one of the bass riffs on that. Uh, it's stolen from Alphaville. From that demo. And uh, we were inspired by... Uh, there was a computer game that we played at the time called uh, uh, Castle of Terror yeah. for uh, Commodore 64. You can see that in the documentary too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we really liked the music and the atmosphere of, of that uh, game, so we, we ripped some of the music that we used in, in the, on, the, on the songs. And yeah, in general, we, we stole a bit from here and a bit from there, and Snorri made it together to his own thing, and I don't know. Inspiration came from from a lot of different places at the time, I think. As it should be. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But he was always always playing with um, kind of. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes he, he played something for me, but it was not uh, the, a real riff. It's like uh, overtone. Yeah, yeah. What's the uh, subharmonics? Yeah. So just no, no, the subharmonics. The... Yeah, yeah. Um, we used that in the music too. So um, it was also a lot of like experimentation with how does a guitar work yeah. and uh, trying to make make interesting stuff out of it. Uh, he kind of uh, he I suppose he created the first black metal riff in a way. Uh, some people say so. Yeah. With the trem- tremolo picking stuff, yeah, um, that was kind of a technique that he he developed um, by taking taking chords um, like classical guitar chords and then figure what if we do it differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, he, yeah, I think he he spread that to to Einstein, Euronymous, and they both kind of picked up on this this technique and. and Improved on it probably, but yeah, he, he was, uh, as I remember it at least, uh, he, that was his his own idea. And people are doing it even today. Yeah, it's a classic black metal way of playing. It is, and and also it's like um, twisting the the harmonics a bit so it gets a bit out of tune or, or a bit uh, kind of disharmonic. Yeah, by bending the strings. Yeah, or by or just moving by, by moving, fingers. moving fingers so that you don't have the chords straight, but you get uh, disharmonic yes. chords instead. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But he did both. He also had this technique where 
uh, to bend the strings, but instead of like bending slowly, he just kind of shook his fingers to get this uh, tremolo effect from from bending the strings. That sounds fucking awesome. So yeah, he he, he did things in his own way. He, he's always been the person that did things in his own way. Yeah. So. Well, he's been silent for years, though. And, uh, yeah. At least the public. Yeah. I suppose he is making music all the time, like all of us. Yeah, I, I don't even know what he's doing myself, but uh, I, was I, I have the impression that he has things to do and, and he's working on things for other people and stuff. But, uh, I don't know. I suppose if you are good at what you do, you will get yeah. gigs. And he is good, so. I had a little hope. Uh, that we uh, would be able to have a podcast with him up at his house. Uh, according to Marius, he doesn't even know yet that we are bringing the recording gear. <laughs> so uh, yeah. we should just yeah, wait I and see. I didn't know either before you were here. So. <laughs> a bit spontaneous. Aye. So hopefully there will be a Snurderuk episode where he can tell his story. Yeah, that would be cool. And he deserves it. the first one, I think. First podcast, I think. Then we should really talk him into it. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of beers and uh, you know, low shoulders. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. We actually, uh, Marius wanted to talk about uh, the road, uh, road life as well. Uh, the trip yeah. here, the scenery, cities we are passing by. Yes, if I knew where I was, I could say something maybe, but now dark. I thought I, I was driving uh, during daylight. So yeah, it's winter's time, my friend. Yes, I know. It's two um, short days. We are actually slowly but surely we're closing in on Alvdal. Yep. And there's a history there. There's, uh, for those of you who know Flåklippa. Isn't, uh, isn't he from Alvdal? Yeah. There's Kjell Øygrøst. Uh, ja, Kjell Øygrøst. Um, there's, e there's even a, a theme park there. Yeah. On top of a mountain, just like in the movie. Mm. Where uh, Riodor Felgen uh, has his uh, workshop. Yeah. And I guess people from outside of Norway don't know shit about what you're talking about right now, but it's uh, well known to every uh, Norwegian. Yeah, that's... Uh, I guess that's... I can't remember if... if uh, Aukrus specifically was part of our inspiration. We, we got uh, especially some inspiration from, from one of the other well-known Norwegian authors, uh, Torbjörn Egner. Yeah. Which did a lot of kind of children's TV type thing and, and children's stories. But there, there were always a certain darkness to at least some of it. It's actually kind of scary stuff. Yeah, lots so of the Norwegian history and stories. Yeah. I, I feel Aukrust is, is more. He, he was more light. Uh, I don't know. I, re, I really like uh, both his writing and the character he's created and, and everything, but he was more like uh, uh, fun and games and, and uh, making pranks. Yeah, true. But. Uh, but definitely, for those who don't know him, definitely a character and, and the world to, to explore. Absolutely. I think. And even um, Ted Nocturno Kelto actually lived up in here. Yeah. yeah. For some years. Oh, him, him and, um, and uh, Ole Jürgen oh. Napoleon as well. Oh. Just yeah. nearby Arvdal. Okay. I didn't know that. So I'm talking Norwegian in here. What happened? The car. I I I, uh, oh. I thought I was putting on on the on the cruise control. Oh yeah. What you just uh, lose, I, losing I speed? Kind of, no, yeah, I stopped the car at 70, so I can go f faster. Okay. 
but now this is 70 on this road and it's like um, taking a picture of you, what do you call it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's morning, yes. uh, yeah, it's... Yes. Uh, and all the other that? guys <laughs> is just driving past me. What the hell? They're locals. Yeah, they know that the machines don't work. Cameras don't work. They have the, uh, installed a mechanism in the car that makes the, 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 the plate uh, turn around <laughs> when they pass the photo box. It's like James Bond. Should have like uh, in in Flocklipa where you can just put all the smoke behind you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours left? Uh, I don't know. Uh, four hours. Four and a half. That's quite According a while. According to the map. It's about it's about six now, six p.m. and uh, we're hitting our target at half past ten p.m. Yeah. And we left uh, Halt. I left Halt uh, at uh, eleven a.m. But uh, when I got halfway to Mario's house, I had to call him and tell him, "Sorry, man, I have to turn around." because I fucking forgot my shit at home. So it took two hours to get to Mario's. Yeah. What are we here now? So, uh, how, uh, how, 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 what, what is the time? Six. Six? Yeah. Ten so six. two hours Ten. more? Yes, sorry Until about that. Until we can uh, buy some beer. Yes, that's true. We need to stop at the shop before eight to get ourselves some beer. I already bought some beer. Yeah. Yeah, it's you're egotist. Be, it's gonna be warm, you know. Yeah, warm yeah. beer. Yeah. Cold beer it's outside. I'm really looking forward to that beer now. I really am. It's Friday. It's oh. Friday and we're spending the evening in a small, tiny car, three grown men. Yes. Yeah. Sweaty grown <laughs> men. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Sweetie. <laughs> no. Doing a fucking podcast. This is totally random, so I'm sorry if it makes no sense, but we tried at least. Yeah. Someone find something to say. Tell a story. Ask something. I don't know what to ask. So, did have you, you seen any good movies lately? <laughs> oh, I, the thing is, I see movies all the time. I watch a lot of movies with uh, with a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But uh, after years and years and years uh, as uh, as walking in, with walking in fumes at the workplace, you know, I've I've worked at a place where you paint cars and there's uh, obviously thinners and the paint and stuff. My memory is not the same. So the short term one is quite quite short. Hmm. So I tend to forget all the movies actually. What? I didn't know. But, um, but you have no problem remembering your lyrics? No, funny, fun enough. I, that's no problem yet. Hmm. What, what was the last movie I saw? I actually saw the new Chucky movie, Child's Play. Hmm. Uh, I was a bit disappointed because it's not the original one. Obviously. I wouldn't expect to be very surprised by it. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. And you're not going to? No, no probably not. Um, we talked about A Quiet Place 1 and 2. I thought those were great. Mm, I haven't seen the second one yet, but uh, I really liked the first one. This well, one. yeah, I can, I can talk about... Um, I was just recently at this uh, horror film festival here in Norway. Yeah. Um, up in a place called Uptal in the middle of Norway. Um, it's a small, tiny place, and they have been organizing this uh, festival. This is this was the 11th year. They 
I've been organizing this, and it's four days with horror films from 10 o'clock in the morning till one o'clock in the uh, in the night, and mostly new films, but uh, they they do show a, a couple of classics too usually. So, last year they they didn't have um, a physical festival, so they did it online. But uh, this year it was back to a proper physical festival where we went to the theater to see the films, and and everybody could join together and, and have beers drink and talk about films again. So it's really great. How many years has that been going on? Uh, 11 years. This was the 11th year. You've been going each year? Uh, no, I've been going each year since I discovered it some six, seven years ago. So I've been there every year since. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, and this year there was a lot of um, I think for the past few years now there has been a lot of focus on, on kind of the more funny movies, um, horror comedies and stuff. Yeah. But this year there was a lot of more heavier films and, and more more to my liking at least. So But um, when you say heavier films, is that like more gory? Not necessarily more gory. We had there was one film this year that was quite gory uh, called The Sadness. Uh, Taiwanese film, which uh, it was f interesting and, and action film from from the first uh, go, and uh, but but those films get more funny than than scary in my my opinion. Okay, at least. But is it too over the top in a way? Uh, sometimes, but uh, sometimes too over the top is just the right mix too. Oh yeah. So, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. It, it was uh, it was an interesting film. It, it was uh, it was very cool. It, it was very point on from the beginning, and, and it, of course a bit related to pandemic and, and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's recorded yeah. during the pandemic, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they kind of play on it. They, they kind of play on the aftermath of the, of the pandemic and how when the virus mutates, how it can can turn out. Yeah. yeah. So, it's interesting. Plausible um, uh, outcome. Uh, not quite plausible. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a zombie movie? Or? It, it's somewhat zombie-ish at times. Yeah. Since you're a film buff, mm -hmm. what do you think about a Serbian film? I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Are you going to see it? Uh, probably at some point. You heard about it? Yeah, yeah, I know about it. Uh, what is it? Like it's it's described as one of the most controversial movies in yeah. the later years, at least I don't know, yeah. or ever. I'm not sure. Uh, it, it is very controversial, and, and a lot of people don't like it. Uh, I've, it I've heard from you, you know what? It's, I, I, it, it's essentially torture porn. Yeah, I actually own it, I, yeah. but I, it's been so long since I've seen it, I can't really remember, remember actually. I, I've heard a lot of people say it's it's really good, and, and a lot of people say that it's the worst thing they've ever seen. So, I don't know. Um, I want to see it myself to, to make up my mind. What I can seem to remember is that the guy is kind of blindfolded or something, and he's, he's uh, forced to have sex with different, let's say, things or people, and uh, one of the scenes, uh, I guess that's the most controversial scene, uh, he's uh, fucking something and uh, his blindfold uh, comes off and he sees that uh, it's an infant, hmm. yeah, you know, so it's controversial in that way, yeah. but hey, it's a shock, a shock factor. Yeah, it is. But, yeah, I haven't seen it. So, what? At some point. Yeah, yeah, sure. What's the What's the most gory film you've seen? Most gory? That's uh, I don't know. Brain Dead. Yeah, most people say <laughs> Brain Dead. It's uh, It's hard to to top. Uh, That's Peter Jackson, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before they started giving him money. Yeah, that was <laughs> way before <laughs> Hobbits and uh, Dragons. Yeah. 
but he was. Uh, I, I really like uh, his films. Uh, he's funny. I remember. Yeah, but he, he made some serious films before that too, uh, or after Branded, of course. But yeah. uh, the one. I don't remember the English title in Norwegian. It was called uh, Sort of Engler. Okay. Uh, I don't remember the English title. But that, that was a really, really good movie. Dark and disturbing, but without gore or without... Uh, a thriller or drama? Or, or more like a dark drama, I would say. Yeah. I haven't seen that. I remember he made a mock documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Forgotten Silver or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. That was quite funny because yeah, when that, I saw it the first time, I thought it was real. Yeah. Uh, that's one I haven't seen yet, actually, but uh, I've heard a lot about it. I want to see it. You should see it. Yeah. Uh, he, is it New Zealand he's from? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose there's something regarding New Zealand. Yeah, it was uh, New Zealand made the first proper film or something. Yeah, and it's like a found like, footage thing, yeah, yeah. you know? Yes, that's true. Uh, it's about filmmaking. Yeah. Or fictional filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose he's a patriot of his country. Yeah, or he makes fun of them. Yeah, but perhaps. <laughs> what is he doing these days? Um, probably more films. I don't know. His King Kong was excellent. Wasn't he uh, supposed to make the the um, the new Lord of the Rings or not Lord of the Rings, but he made the, the Hobbit. Yeah, but the the story before the Ring. Oh, Silmarillion. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he, he should. Yeah, well, yeah, because he has all the, you know, all the clothes and the swords and then whatever. Uh, he has it in the closet. So <laughs> yes. Just use it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> waiting for another chance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think he did a good job. No thanks. Uh, yeah, no he thanks. Did, did an excellent job with. Uh, I haven't seen the Hobbit, but with Lord of the Rings, he did an excellent job. I think. Uh, oh. And it was like when I heard he was going to make it, I was. I was thinking this is kind of something that nobody can make. Yep. But uh, he seeing what he can do when with no money, then sure, yeah, he can do it. You saw the original movie, right? Yeah, the the, the drawing have, one, animated yeah, one. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, hybrid. Yep. I have it at home. Uh, I, I, I like that one too. Yeah, I have it's it at home. Very it, the strange thing about that the is people. it's <laughs> it's two of the books. Yeah. It's they, they a fellowship run, and two towers. Yeah, they ran out of money. Yeah, and a third one came out a bit later. Oh, they but, did? I yes, know, but okay. I don't think it's the same people. No. And it's really shitty and it mm. looks like, I think it's kind of more like a children's thing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's a blue bridge coming up. Yep. So where are we? Uh, Ardon, Ardon. I suppose. This yeah. is Ardon. So this is Elf Valley, people. You can see it, but we can. Anyone want a cup of tea or something? Or you coffee? Want? Or coffee? Sounds like you want one. Yeah, kinda. It's a pit stop now. It's always me. We're always stopping the car because of me. Yeah. I'm a bastard. Okay. You guys can just keep it going here. Blimey, no. Oh, you go in. No, no, we stop this. Okay, da parker jeg litt lenger bort. Nå vet du, det er ikke noe flere buttinger etter dette. Du skal ikke oppe om Trondheim nå, ok? Nei, det håper jeg ikke da blir enda lenger tid. Ok, I'm recording again, by the way. Jo. Så take it in English. Wouldn't it be better to find something that you want to record before we record? It's just a fucking road trip, guys. Just a fucking road trip. Just whatever we say. Talk. Open mouth and make noise. Ok. Thing? Yeah, that right, right there. Yeah. The okay. red one. Yeah. So there's where he lives. But can you tell what it is? The, the red thing? Yeah. It's the thing that's inside the car. The secret yeah, uh, yeah, weapon yeah. Ah. that he saws. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And he has to hold it. Mm. Okay, so it's not this. Yeah, the one that they... Yeah, yes, so. they uh, well, sabotage it. They should it. have yeah. made his mount too, you know. They should have made it, made yeah. it with like this bridge yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, the real one. Yes. I, th I think it's sad that they didn't do that. Why did they use that thing? Yeah. Oh well, I'm no expert. I think the... Um, I think the, the 
couldn't uh, afford the, the, the foam to make the mount. You can hear the, the wrapping of a uh, chocolate bar being ripped apart. Oh, look at this one. This one is really good. Okay, just like. We are all about elastic. And the reality podcast. <laughs> what? It's like a reality podcast. It is? Yeah. We have a new trend going on now. Yeah, yeah well, we'll have to see if it becomes a trend. You know, That's Enaco true. has uh, this um, minute yeah. by minute. Yeah, yeah. We can do the same. Yeah. That's true. But do they talk? Meter by meter. Yeah. Oh, they play crappy music. Yeah, we can do that too. You know what? I saw a minute by minute thing a while back, but it was not on a not on a boat or a train or something. It was a guy walking a trail. Oh, yeah. I what? think I think he walked to Ulriken or something, yeah. a mm. spot uh, above Bergen. Mm. That was quite a cool thing to see actually. Okay. If you have a have a few hours to <laughs> spend, you know. But he and went somehow. I kind of feel I want to spend my time differently. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't but know what you mean. <laughs> I heard you sold this, uh, this uh, boat trip. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. You can slow police. So no, how long is it? Yeah. Uh, to the Japanese uh, railway or something. But have you seen that? Uh, I heard it. I okay. Know. So you can sit on the subway, I think. Subway. Yeah. And see the boat trip there. Long subway trip then. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Regarding traveling and uh, and uh, vehicles and stuff like that, the most disappointing trip I ever took was uh, the train from Oslo to Bergen. Oh, why? Oh. <laughs> it's only tunnels. <laughs> you don't see shit. Uh, it's like a few tunnel. seconds with oh look at the tundra and the mountain and it's gone again. That sucked. So my my advice to you guys is to take the night train. Go to the pub wagon, get yourself shit faced, sit in your seat and sleep. It's not worth uh, staying awake for that shit. I kind of like the trip, but uh, why? Yeah, there's nicer trips, uh, train trips in Norway. And one of them is from the Bergensbahn down uh, the Flomsbahn down to Flom. Okay. That's a very beautiful uh, ride. It's like a scenic thing? Yeah, there's yeah. lots of tunnels there too, but uh, it's also really nice. The other one is uh, Raumabahn. Yeah. From uh, Dombas to Ondalsnes. Damas? Damas to uh, Ondalsnes. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, there you go, uh, at the very bottom of uh, Trollstigen. Oh. Uh, the troll wagon, the troll wall, the, the, the mountains there are really spectacular and you're right at the bottom of them and just looking straight up. Okay. So, amazing uh, train trip. I need to check that out sometime. The thing is that when I'm traveling I'm usually driving the car, you know, when I'm on... Each summer me and my girlfriend have a long vacation in a road trip in Norway, you know, mm. so you never There's get a, the chance. Lots to... of nice places. Yeah, 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 sure, mm. absolutely. But you don't get the time, or um, you don't, you're not able to take the train some places, you know, when you have the car. Yeah, no, not when you have the car. I usually I try to go by train when I can. But, yeah. Uh, well, but we do, we do drive a bit too, and um, there's lots of really nice places that you can't get anywhere else or any any other way. I kind of enjoy the, the train ride from Oslo to Bergen. Yeah, I do too. Why? Yeah, because it's better than the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. That's a really boring... Uh... Even, you know, when uh, the trains are standing still from Oslo to Halden, a mm. bus ride is hell. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, it's... 
uh, normally it's like one hour and I don't know 45 minutes by car or but the bus is stopping at each and every single little stop you know so it takes like three hours to get home uh, luckily it's not that often that happens anymore it was a period actually when they were working on the train lines quite a quite a whole quite a lot and, uh, you know. so during the summer I think a lot of trains has to be bus rides yeah that's that. true bus for dog Happening up and up uh, ahead. There's some um, blinking lights. This is a discotheque. So it might be a discotheque. Maybe it's the Bee Gees. The Bee Gees. Mm. Oh, no, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. A bit of 70s disco beats. Mm. I actually, I have a. It's not a secret love, but I love. Uh, you know the band Hot Chocolate? No, I don't know. It's a black band, mm. and uh, they have a track called uh, "Everyone's a Winner." Okay. Fantastic '70s disco song. Oh, okay. When we finish with this shit, I will put it on, mm. and maybe we can uh, get a bit groovy. Get groovy. That's uh, the thing we want. Uh, yes. Tight little car with uh, three with, road men. with <laughs> three black metalers. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a discotheque, by the way. It's just no. road work. Oh. Oh well. The road works spilled my tea. They did? Yep. Bastards. What kind of tea did you, did you grab, sir? Uh, just straight uh, Earl Grey. Alright. Bergamot. Earl Grey with um, green tea and lemon taste yeah. on me. That's not a bad one. No, it's good. I was actually ad advised by my doctor to drink a bit of green tea. Yeah. So I'm um, following in his advice. Can you get uh, ginger tea? Yes, yeah. it's fantastic. Make, you can make tea from anything. Yeah. You know, but tea uh, is a vast it, world. It's gonna be strong, like ginger. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the good part. Mm. I like strong stuff, like chilies and ginger. So I drink uh, mostly ginger tea, actually. I got this small ginger uh, bottle, ginger soda. I don't know. Yeah, from tour. Yes, he's very into ginger, yeah. very much. We're talking about Saidemon now, of yeah, uh, 30 for 49. And it was really good. And yes. It was, um, for my throat. Yes, yeah. good for your voice. Really. So I was, um, you know, looking, looking for that in, in the shop. Yep. And uh, I thought I found it, but it was, uh, what do you call it, Bruce. Yeah, but there's millions of kinds. There's oh. many different ones. So you need yeah, to ask. This was just sweet. Yeah. Not okay. No, no, not strong. Not strong at all. I actually go to. Um, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, okay. the health store, and I buy uh, powder ginger tea, extra strong. Oh, okay. So okay. Yeah, and I just cook some water. <laughs> 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 okay. I boil some water in the water boiler just to put it <laughs> straight. <laughs> and uh, you know, up in the in the cup, and then you put I don't know, maybe two to three sp uh, spoons, teaspoons of that uh, powder in there. And then there you go. Okay. I I tend to drink that before I'm supposed to sing and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I bring that uh, jar with me. But uh, you told me something about uh, exercise for my voice. Yes. What was that? Breathing down a tube? Yeah, you put a tube up your ass. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. All right. No, no, no. The thing is, you just take a regular soda bottle or something, like half liter kind. You fill it up halfway with the hot water, yeah. and you put a tube in there that you just blow on while you make noises with your throat. Like yes. Roy. Yes. Like this. Yes, and change the notes if you can, if you can manage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually uh, quite exhausting. And so you, you have to you know, you use your lung capacity at the same time you're pushing yes. the air into the bottle. And, you're and you can't do it too hard and you have to control it because the, all, all is gonna. Yeah, you, you don't fill it up too much, okay. you know, because it bubbles. And then, and then uh, just okay. And you are kind of uh, closing and opening your throat muscles, yeah. you know, yeah. which is a good exercise.
what is that really? Now we're talking about something like maybe interesting to people, and black metal people, black metal singers are yeah. actually caring about their voice. And, and not, I don't think not, that's not, not everyone. No, I don't think that goes for everyone. No, not everyone. But, but I'm uh, actually concerned about my voice. I want to maintain it. Mm. That's something. Something about that, you know. And uh, you know, Mork has never been touring much. We we done. We did a uh, six or seven day tour in Canada several years ago, and mostly we've been playing one-off shows, you know, so yeah. I'm kind of, I don't know how my voice will act out if I go on a longer stretch, you know, mm. so the, that's also a good point to maintain your voice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, and there is technique. There is, um, I, I don't know, I'm a singer myself, but uh, um, I haven't really paid too much attention to to it, but you you kind of notice when you do it right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and yeah. in my experience, it has been that when you doing one-off shows is actually really difficult because then your voice isn't. It's, it's warmed kind of, up. But, but, but yeah. when you do uh, several gigs in a row and, and go yeah. on a tour for for an extended period of time, mm. not I haven't been on that long tours, but a few weeks. Then then enough. you kind of get the, the the voice gets into shape. Yeah, yeah. So, and you kind of keep it warm mm. yeah. between gigs. Yeah. That's true. So that I, I feel it at least works a lot better. My voice is always better the the next day after yeah, yeah. the after. Yeah, that's the what, you, what you're thinking when when yeah, you're so doing more. doing one one gig. It's like oh, but now is when we should have the gig yeah. Yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But do you have a sore throat when you're done with the first show? Uh, no, not with the show. No, but uh, the first day, uh, the, the, the the day before we take the show, mm. we have a rehearsal. Yeah. And then, um, if I do it the wrong, the wrong way, yeah. my uh, my throat is sore. But if I do the right way, it's uh, if I when I sit in my car to the rehearsal place, yep. I sing, yep. and not screaming. No, no, but You're singing, singing, singing like in yes. the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Like yes. Ah, uh, so le mio, like this. Oh, you have a yeah. good voice, sir. And then. You sing like this, and then you take the rehearsal with mm. a grim voice, yep. you know. And uh, if you, uh, then I normally don't get sore. But the next day, my voice is even better when I do the screaming. The, the yeah, yeah, because I done it the day uh, before. Then you do something right. Mm. Yeah. But if you get sore, then you do something wrong. Yes. Mm. Easy as I haven't that. Uh, kind of uh, softened my. Uh, Throat. throat. Yeah. Throat. Kind of bad English. Okay, but you understand. I understand. Yes. So. But you, I, I, I suppose I told you this before. But you have a kind of a fascinating grim vocal. Yeah. You have your own thing, you know. I, I kind of cool what you said. So I, I'm thinking about it like every second day. Yeah. <laughs> Pompous piece of shit. <laughs> hey, should we grab a beer now? So you have to drive all the way, anyways. Punishment. <laughs> now, what was it? Now? What? What was it? What was what? About my voice. No, I think it's cool. You have a great sounding grim vocal voice. Okay, uh, okay that's your growling voice. Yeah, I like thank it. You. Thank you. Mm, Would yeah. you? Maybe you should do something on my next album. I love to. Yeah. That I remember you asked me for. Asked me about. Let's do something. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. Because your voice is so different than mine. Yeah. I think you're kind of extreme voice. When I when I hear it, you had you listen to when you are um, on the scene. On yeah. The, on the on stage. Uh, on the stage. Mm. It's kind of raw. Yeah. It's uh, you know. It's. It's brutal. Yeah. But that's how I sound, you yeah. know? Everyone has their voice yeah, and that's uh, that's a cool thing. But I know you can sing different voices. Too. I can sing clean as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that I did that first, you know, for uh, many, many, many years. Your, your last album? Yeah, I, I always try to incorporate some clean vocals on the albums. Because I'm not scared to do that. But that makes me very untrue and very not cult. Of course. Yes. I am poster boy, but uh, it's cool. 
because I love music and if it elevates the piece of art that I'm trying to shape, hey, I'm not going to hold back. Now that's the point, you, know, you have to make the, the music that you want to make yeah. exactly. and express it the way you want to express it. If you paint by numbers, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, you should be drowning by numbers. Yep. I will never get rich, but I do what I want to do. You know? Kind of cool what the doctor said. There was a Ted that said. What was that? When I said, um, we, do, uh, we do what we like to do, and sometimes we do it wrong, but then it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Oh, that makes sense though. The album gets completed, it gets released, mm -hmm. so it's, it, you know, yeah. it's right. Yeah. yeah, I think it was uh, good when everyone also said that uh, there's a lot of people making cake. We are making everyday bread. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm not, I don't suppose, I, I suppose, it's quite, quite funny quote actually. He actually says, ah, that guy to leak a carcass, man, we love a That's a funny one. Uh, that's from it's a, to the point. Yeah, it's very, very to the point. It's from an old Lydverk uh, yeah, yeah. uh, episode actually. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not sure, I, maybe Ted will have my head off now, but uh, he told me the other day that uh, they are actually in the can with yet another album already. Oh. So they are really effective yeah, these days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's I haven't heard the last one yet. But you I haven't heard it got the really good reviews. Oh, it, it's top-notch reviews all over the all over the place. And the fun, the, the, the fucking cool thing is that it's I don't know number one on billboards kind of thing. You know mm -hmm. the reception. Yeah. And if you listen to the album, it's even more necro than the last one. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds yeah, I mean, really necro old. Yeah, that's my impression of these guys. They, they don't compromise. They just do what they want. It's so fucking cool. They yeah. don't do. They don't tour. Mm. They don't make music videos. No. And the Dark Throne yeah. ship sails on. Yeah. Still one of the biggest black metal bands out there. Mm. Respect. Absolutely. And they do precisely what they want to do. Did you listen to the last one, the previous one, Old Star? No. There's a track it's there. It's a few years since I had any. Yeah, since I heard anything. Of oh, you should check it out. Yeah. It's a lot of gold. Mm. It's a track called "The Hardship of the Scots" from the yeah. previous album, which is fucking excellent. Yeah. What's cool. the story about the, the cover? Uh, the new one yeah, or the new one? Yeah, yeah, I actually saw something online that it's a painting or something. I, I'm not sure in what context it has been used before, and I have no idea what it's about this time around, because I haven't got been able to ask the guys yet. Since the album was released, I don't think we met. Okay. But uh, I'm kind of curious about it. Okay, so did we have a uh, podcast with uh... both of them? Yeah, but it's a while back now. Uh, I think the, f the one with Fenris was... That was after the album release. Uh, no. Yeah, but uh, you, didn't, you didn't discuss that then? No, nothing about the new one, because that is that is quite new. Okay. Yeah, it's really... Re when, when did it come out? It's only a couple Not months uh, ago. Yeah, maybe a couple oh, months. Okay. It's really recent, actually. But Ted told me that uh, the, before this album came out, he told me that uh, no, Dark Throne is now entering a new era. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is they are leaving home recording and going into a proper studio again. Okay. So this uh, last one now is actually from a studio in Oslo. So no more bathrooms and... Uh... I don't know. They've been recording in, in Chilarnes basement. Yeah, they recorded at Chilarnes for ten years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, how was that? I think it was everything from sardonic wrath, um, including up to uh, oh, 
you circle the wagon and say, no, underground resistance. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, because then uh, I think uh, yeah, and, and uh, Michelle on this kid says scoring. Oh, no, they're singing on some tracks yeah. actually. But not on that one. I think no, that's uh, they're singing on. One of the previous ones. Yes, they're one of the cross punk or mm. more heavy metal ones. Mm. But Arctic Thunder and All Star is recorded in uh, their old re uh, rehearsal place at Colbotten. Oh. Yeah. Uh, in a car park or something beneath a building. But uh, they were evicted from there actually. There was something going on with the building and they had to leave. Oh. So that's why they're now back in the studio, I think. So it's kind of cool. It's like the situation just pushes them to make new choices. Yeah. And uh, that's the, no, the, the thing about, you know, Bursum. I'm a big fan of his music, obviously, but he went to Grigal mm. after he came out of prison. Obviously, uh, and I went there and recorded each and every album up till the point that Grieg Holm closed, mm. and then he started making the music at home. Mm. He, 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 not even considering going into a different studio. No. Okay, Grieg Holm and Pitten is over. Okay, I, I won't go. I won't go in that studio anymore. <laughs> That's kind of funny way of thinking. Mm. Yeah, but it may also be in the, the way uh, studio it's equipment. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the studio equipment and stuff has become a lot cheaper and, and it's more feasible to do it at home. That's true, but have you heard that the stuff is made at home now in recent no, years? No, I haven't. It's heard. terrible. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. It's like, it's, it's just synthesizer or... stuff. Yeah. I think that... I, I like a lot of synthesizer stuff. Yeah, okay, I don't... Oh yeah, sure, you can give it a chance. Yeah, I probably won't. It's not my, not my cup of tea though. Yeah. But I love his... Uh, Call it metal stuff. Yeah, his early stuff uh, I liked it too. So. But did you hear the stuff after prison? No. Oh, that's. I think that's almost even better actually. But we're kind of close to home now since both of you know that guy, I suppose, from back then. I never met him actually. Uh, Morris was. Uh, Morris did meet him. has to be strange, you know, people are all over the world are talking about this stuff. And here we are, sitting, and you are so close to it. You know, it was your friends and stuff that got killed, and it's close to home. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's strange. It's, uh, but, it's but, but it's also culture it, history, you know? Yeah, it, it's also so long ago now, but, it, it's, but, but I remember when it happened, it was, and, and especially for me being kind of outside of it I was never in the in the scene yeah that much and it was like me and Snorra up in Trondheim and, and yeah of course he moved to Oslo I, I stayed in Trondheim at the time but for me it was kind of weird how it was essentially just uh, Euronymous that I knew and of course uh, Jörn and, and stuff but it's uh, when, when all this happened, it was kind of just things became real in a way. Yeah, how did it feel? It just felt real, it, right? It, it felt really weird, and especially because I wasn't part of, of the scene. I, I didn't have, or that into the scene at least. Uh, I was kind of on, on the outskirts, and uh, so I didn't know. I didn't have the insight that the people in the scene probably had, yeah. or those closer to it. So to me it was really strange and, and it's like when the suggestion came in, in the newspapers that uh, it was... He might uh, have done it. Yeah, I, I didn't believe it and partly because I knew that if he had been involved in it then Snorri had been involved in it too because he had moved down to Bergen yeah. just before. Yes. Um, and that was kind of some mental block on, on my part that I wasn't able to cope with that being the case until I read in the paper that he had admitted it. And then it's like, what, what is, this is, this is my very close friend, why, why, what, what's happening? Yeah. Uh, what has happened to him? I don't know. So it was, uh, it was very strange. But you were still close then, right? Me and Snorra? Yeah. yeah. 
So this happened while you were basically hanging out, but you didn't know about it. Yeah, well, <coughs> he, he had moved to he had moved to Bergen earlier in the summer. I asked myself why. Why did he move to Bergen? It's not a thing to do there. It's not. I I think I know a bit about that, but. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's speculation, but, but Snorri was not in a very good spot at that time, so he moved to Bergen when his parents were on vacation to just kind of escape. Okay. So but he lived in Tron, uh, Oslo then? Or? I, I had come back to Trondheim. Okay. So we hung out a lot in that summer, and and I knew when he was going to leave and everything, and, and, but I wasn't home that weekend or, or something. I don't remember exactly, but I didn't see... I didn't meet Park when he came up to pick his mother up. And then they went to Bergen, and then that's kind of the last thing I saw from him uh, until I met him in prison afterwards. On oh, you I went to went, visit him? When I went to visit him. Yeah. How long did he sit, you know, spend inside? I don't know exactly how long time it was. He got a sentence of eight and a half years, I think. Yeah. But then prison term and it was and shortened and stuff somewhat yeah, and he, he had took some education and, and oh. I think he got out a bit earlier but not yeah. that much earlier he, he sat for a, a good while it's really close <laughs> guys it really yeah, it is, is. And, I mean it doesn't stop people are writing about it and singing about it and making films about it even today yeah, yeah. just think about it yeah, but I don't think that's so strange. I mean, it, it's rock and roll history. Uh, it's, it's stupid yeah, it, to put it, it like that, but yeah, it's but, the but truth. It is. It's it's a part of, of history, and it's part of Norwegian black metal would never have been anywhere near what it is today if this these things hadn't happened. That's true. Um, I don't think the I music would have prevailed uh, like that. Actually. No, it, it would have been different. And, and but, but there was a lot of really good musicians in the scene already. Of course. And they would have been good musicians and, and probably made it to something today too. Yeah. But it wouldn't have been that. And, and we wouldn't have all the bands that came after. No. Like that, me. Yeah. And like, For example. Like pretty much everyone. Yeah. So... The computer... Yeah, it is strange. The computer told me now that the battery is running low. Yeah. But we will go on until the bitter end. Trend. Yeah, so it always ends at the bitter end. It has to end sometime. When the fat lady sings. That's true. That's the that's one fact, people, that everyone can trust is that everything will end. Yep. <laughs> Even you. <laughs> On yeah. the lighter side. <laughs> oh man. I think this episode turned out quite well in the end. You know. We've been jumping around. Cut out all the chaff. Then. I will leave everything in there. Yeah, of course, sure. that's the funny thing. Mm. It's all the, the quiet, uh, the thinking and the farting <laughs> and the burping, yeah. the chocolate wrappings. Chocolate wrappings. Oh, it's, I, you know what? That is what do I. You have a drink there? Uh, yes, I do. What I like about podcasts is that it's you don't have to edit. It's not a radio no. show. No, no. It's kind of real. And uh, when I am listening to a podcast, I enjoy the actual conversation is just going on, you know. Even though we are all over the place now, that is the, precisely the same thing that, you know, you know Joe Rogan, Um No, I don't think so. Uh, he is one of the biggest podcasters in the world. He's okay. basically the biggest one. Okay. He has guests over, they sit and talk for hours about mm -hmm. everything and anything. And uh, I think that's kind of cool. But they're talking their own language, right? But they're speaking American, yeah. Yes, and uh, not like us. No, but we are speaking American too. Yeah. Your, your accent is we really are not good. Uh, speaking American, we are speaking originally. I happen to have been studying in England for 25 years. <laughs> uh, your accent is great. Oh, thanks. I feel like an amateur next to you right now. Yeah, well, I don't get paid to speak English, so I'm not a professional either. No. No. But I have Marius here, so I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. It's my, my son is really embarrassed when he listens to me. It's really yeah. like he has to walk away when I ask for directions or something oh. in, in English. It's like, 
Oh man. So bad. So yeah. when I talked to Rob, yeah. the, the sound te technician, yeah. and I tried to explain something, and he, he, he come, come, comes up to me and say, I can, I can uh, do it better. I can tell him what you want to do. <laughs> stepdaughter too. She only she, she tries to only speak English because Norwegian isn't cool. Yeah, she only yeah but English. kids and kids today are excellent English they speaking they are, people. They are really well so it's not that but it's like yeah, come on learn, learn a bit Norwegian too. My stepson is 11 and he speaks almost basically fluently yeah. American now yeah. because you know there is online gaming there's YouTubing going yeah. on so they're it's exposed like, to it all the time. They are, but I think it's it's a bit sad if, if kind of our native language also kind of dies because of it because there's it, a lot of cultural history and a lot of yeah, but it doesn't that that, that that's no you know, concern it probably, probably won't happen. It's just uh, oh, they say it will it will uh, uh, well, disappear at, after, at some point. It probably like, will. Was it hundred years or something? In the end, will we all speak Arabic? Yeah. We speak a common, uh, one or two common, common, famous, yeah, common, yeah, two. common uh, languages. Yeah. Like English and Spanish? English, That's Spanish, the, Russian, Chinese. Yeah. There's a couple of big ones, or Chinese is not a language, but uh, Mandarin. Yeah, that's true, sir. Mandarin. Did you get any response from China? Me? For, for you ask for uh, oh, yeah. playing gigs in China? No, that was Japan. Almost. China. No, all, uh, uh, it was both actually. To, yeah, to yeah, I saw the Chinese one. Yeah, because uh, a Chinese fellow contacted me because he wanted to make a cultural hmm. uh, exchange with Norway and China. Yeah, and cool. he wanted to do it with black metal. Oh, so okay. I sent over a video uh, greeting to the Chinese people. Yeah. But uh, since COVID came around, there's not been much happening there. And you know no. where COVID came from, right? Wuhan. Yeah, it came from China. Yeah. So uh, it's a bit chaotic. But uh, hopefully that will clear up soon and we can be able to go over there. But That'd I also yeah, I would love to go over there, Beijing and stuff yeah. like that, to see the wall mm. and play for the people, yeah. at least, you know. But I also tried to set something up in Japan. Mm. That Where did I go? Uh, no response yet. So, uh, but uh, our new management will probably look into that. Yeah, I would love to go over there too. I know that Steiner and and uh, those yeah, I mean, guys are tourists. Then it's a pretty pretty easy tour. It's it's not a big country. It's maybe four gigs, four cities, yeah. and they take the bullet train yeah. in between, yeah. and a separate van picks up and uh, carries the equipment. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of comfortable. Yeah. Long trip to get there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's about this uh, car ride, I think. No, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. You even have to change uh, plane somewhere in the middle. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. And then uh, even further. Okay. We were also talking. We are talking about going to Australia, yeah. and that's even further. Yeah. yeah. Have you been there? Nope. But the furthest east I've been is it has to be Izmir, uh, Turkey. We played there in 2018. Yeah, I, saw, I saw a picture of you there with uh, the promoter there. Yeah, with Istan. Uh, with Istan. Yes. I never saw that picture before. Never. No. But you know, you you remember that they went down there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember it very good. Yeah. That was the guy who had them there. Okay. So, yeah. so it was kind of a historical thing. Yeah. Uh, then it's very it's humbling to be included in that. Follow the tradition of turning off the, the power all the time? No, he didn't. <laughs> it worked out. We did have some issues with the PA actually, but that was kind of random. But it was an excellent gig. I think it was like 300 people there. Wow, okay. Crazy Turks and some people who came from other countries. And the most special thing is that I remember this was pre-show sometime. I was setting up some, I don't know, I was just hanging out inside the venue. And a guy came up to me and uh, Thomas, you need to uh, come with me outside because uh, there's a boy here who has uh, 
uh, traveled from Syria to see you guys. Wow, wow. okay. And I went out there and he didn't speak English that well. He had a Bursum t-shirt on. And I was like, hey, nice to meet you, kind of thing, you know. And uh, just to be complimentary, I just said, oh, that's a cool t-shirt. And then he, I, he didn't really get what I was saying. But he, he understood I was pointing at his t-shirt. So he then proceeded to take it off and give it to me. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 that's not what I mean. It was a, it was a cool band, you know. But he came from Syria, and and uh, and uh, the story is that he. I suppose you guys figured out this is the point where the battery died on the laptop. I should see if I can um, manage to obtain some kind of a car charger for the laptop for potential future on the road episodes. I promise I will at least give it a try. All right. See you next time.